Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm John. And this is the park. Rock. It's a, it's a rock. Oh, you think it's a bench? Yeah. And we are in or near Pasadena, California, yeah. USA. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got an invite to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Let's just, let's yeah. just cut to the chase <laughs> there, right there. There is no better way of saying it. We have been as close to Mars as we are getting. <laughs> That's so not technically true based on orbits. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> so back at EMF camp uh, many, many months ago. Middle of summer of 2016. Yep. Uh, we met uh, a guy called Ara, who uh, came up to us, said, hi, uh, by the way, I'm an engineer at JPL, business card. <laughs> uh, do you want to come and do something with us? Yes. <laughs> yes. So yeah, eight or nine months later, <laughs> Here we are in California. Uh, so you won't see this until quite a few weeks later. I imagine we've done a couple of park benches in other locations by the time this goes out. Okay. Um, but by the time this comes out, the first video from, from JPL will be out. And this is the behind the scenes. This is how we got there and what we did. <laughs> Firstly, massive thank you to everyone that yeah. has shown us around today. It was a whistle-stop tour, I think is the phrase people yes. use. Yeah. We had only a few hours and they showed us so many different areas, so many different places, and it's a massive campus. They don't like the word campus. Uh, lab. 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 It's a campus. They have a massive site. <laughs> and it's like a 10 minute walk between different places. It's so big and... Yeah. Uh, so yes, thank you very much to literally everyone we met and interviewed. You were all wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Matt is a bigger space geek than I am. I put on a spacey t-shirt because I'm doing a spacey thing. And one person said, yes, I can see from the t-shirt. Everyone else went, hey, cool, I like your shirt. <laughs> so we, we rock up. Um, we, we get through initial security, everything like that, get badged in. Uh, we, show our passports because we're foreign nationals. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was, a, there was a proper email back and forth negotiation with the press department for this. I want to stress that we do not just rock up at a place no. on one employee's say-so. No, months of emails, press departments, yeah. media relations, all that kind of yep. stuff. Um, uh, and we are taken straight to mission control. Like, there's literally... It's the mission control room for the Deep Space Network. They call it the centre of the universe. We walked straight in. Reception, right, follow me. And but uh, we're in a mission control room with the banks of desks, with the... On the walls there were uh, video diagrams of different satellites that are currently being received by the Deep Space Network. And we haven't, like, lit that or anything specifically for film. It's or... a moody-looking room. They have the blue <laughs> LED light strip around yeah. every desk. It's clearly, like... Decades of Hollywood and decades of actual industrial control rooms have clearly started competing with each other <laughs> just a little. Because yes. we saw the old photos of DSN and it did not used to look like that. It still looked bloody cool, oh, yeah. but this yeah. looks shiny. The, the PR department have clearly had a hand in designing all... Like, those graphical displays at the top with the real-time renders of what it might look like if you were in a camera orbiting around the telescopes <laughs> with the day and night lighting... The, they don't need that. No. They don't need anything other than a couple of plain text terminals and some buttons to click <laughs> on. But does it look cool? Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm sure it feels so much gooder to... <laughs> I'm going to continue. If you're working there and you've got all that shiny stuff around you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then we got there and, like... So we're doing a video about Voyager 1. Well, I am. You're... Pointing cameras at yeah. you while you're doing the video. I, my script was about Voyager 1 and we get there and they are downlinking from Voyager 1 right then. Like they have a real-time display, which was it eyes.nasa.gov? I think so. Because that URL probably won't make it into the final video. But like they have a live, might be ears, whatever, it's in the description. We will link it in the yeah. description below. There is a real-time chart of what the Deep Space Network is receiving and sending to all the missions from which antennas in which locations. Yeah, you can see which telescopes, which antennas are receiving what, why, when and how and for how long. Yeah, and we get there and they are downlinking from Voyager 1 right then. So I'm slowly getting my camera out, so I'm checking things, <laughs> cleaning lenses. Uh, we've only got, uh, not very long till that stops down. Okay, I'll, no, 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 it's, it's gonna turn off now. Oh, uh, quick, camera up. Oh, and it's gone. So I don't know if we actually got that no. shot. You'll know by, by the time you've seen the video, but yeah, they were actually downlinking from Voyager 1 while we were there, and Voyager 2 in the next few minutes. And then someone comes in and tells us, 
by the way, <laughs> in about 45 minutes, this is all going to go dark. Maintenance window. For the entire DSM. For the rest of the day. We had got there <laughs> in the nick of time. Yeah. <laughs> 45 minutes in which to do an entire interview, do a couple of takes just in case of Tom's pieces to camera, and then all the B-roll, the close the cutaway, the cutaway shots. Yeah. Did I tell you about I, I worked with a camera op who normally works with YouTube stuff, one of my videos a while back. Okay. Did not get the concept of B-roll. <laughs> was like, can't you just jump cut it? Like, don't do that. That's, that's not a Maybe on here slightly, yeah. but no. Um, so in 45 minutes, a, a wonderfully in-depth interview. I might like, no, I was going to say I'll try and see if I can do an extended interview, but there are going to be better extended interviews out there for people who've, who've looked into that. Um, but interview with the controller, my, B, my pieces, B-roll, everything. It's not like they were going to turn off the consoles, it would still be running, but people were going to leave to do other stuff, and any space nerds watching would immediately go, why are you in a closed-off control room that isn't yeah. actually receiving anything? It looked like a replica or a... It didn't seem right to do it <laughs> when it wasn't doing things. Yes. So we did it. <laughs> just, just in the nick of time, like the and last... The the last minute of my section is just as they were closing it down. What was that? I'm just moving some of the local wildlife further oh, away. Oh, we've been face. attacked by mosquitoes. Maybe a little bit. Okay. Um, we are we are filming in a park near a waterfall. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we get. Can you see that, by the way? That's the weird shot because there is a waterfall there. Yeah. <laughs> we just picked a we just picked a bit of parkland at random. <laughs> Uh, so, we did the DSN, then we moved on to rover driving. And we didn't have very long after the DSN. We couldn't stand there and go, whoa, look at yeah. this. It was we got, we got a selfie. We got a selfie. We got a quick selfie yep. as an afterthought as we were being whisked <laughs> off to the next place. Yeah. Uh, and we met Paolo, the rover driver. Uh, we met Heather, his boss, and another rover driver. She might not have made it into the final video. I haven't done the edit yet, obviously. I don't know. But she works on opportunity, not curiosity. I think the narrative might go one way rather than the other. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, oh my... Everyone was good on camera, Matt. Everyone. There's nothing more I can add. They, yeah. Th these people have been doing this for years. They know their stuff. Yeah. They know the answer to the questions that we ask. And they know how to say it. And then on top of that, they know more interesting things and go off on one in a good way about... Yep. And Paolo. Paolo has the, the longest... No, the largest he, number of kilometres on Mars. He has driven the furthest on Mars of any person. <coughs> um, he's driven all but one of the rovers, I think he said. Yeah, he did. well, there was one that was Sojourner in the 70s, 80s, yeah. uh, that was before his time. But other than that, he's driven all the rovers, uh, and he's driven 16 kilometres on Mars. That's more than me. <laughs> That's more than you, unless you're one of the no, handful unless, of other people no, watching this. unless you're him. He has driven oh. more than any other rover driver. I can't maths or concepts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blame this on jet luck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were, and then we went off to the Mars yard. Again, it was, oh, it was quick. That, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, on, yeah, his yeah. on his computer in front of him, he had the thing that he uses to drive it. And to simulate driving and it when simulate needed. Yeah. On the right hand side, they had a 3D uh, mouse clicky zoomy Close enough. render of where it is, where Curiosity is on Mars and the landscape around it. And it's 3D terrain, and they've got that from taking 3D photos, because it's got uh, stereo cameras on it, and they've used that data to generate a 3D plot, so he can just look and scroll around like on a video game as yeah. to see where it is on Mars. Yeah. Uh, I, this, it is just an office building. Like after the after the fancy DSN control room, we're like, yeah. oh, it's good. no, this is just this is just a cubicle in a, a small or cubicle set up and then an office, and that's all it needs that's to it. be. It is just computers. Everything yeah. is computers. But yeah, it, and we were talking to him afterwards. That one of the things I always wondered is how um, when you're controlling something that far away, when you've got time lags and different mm -hmm. time there compared to here, how they do it. And he was saying. Generally, they um, prepare it in advance. Yes. Send it a list of things to do. They go to bed. They wake up in the morning and see if it did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I render complicated videos. That's not how you control a <laughs> rover on Mars. Well, it is, but yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we got whisked off. Mars Yard. 
I should point out, this, it, it, is, it is, as we record this, uh, Shrove Tuesday in the UK, Mardi Gras in the rest of the world. So there is a Mardi Gras going on. Oh, yeah. Like just, they, they're giving out free food for the engineers and there's a, there's a band about to strike up. <laughs> so, the entire like, main plaza area, yeah. I'm making it sound more grand than it is in uh, JPL, is littered with tables for um, buffet food and places for yep. people to sit. We didn't get any of that. We weren't. No. We weren't. Rest assured, US taxpayers didn't go, didn't go towards us. No. <laughs> Mars Yard. Yes, so that's where we went next, which is effectively some rubble. Yeah. <laughs> it's but really, it's some very specific yeah. rubble. <laughs> really scientifically accurate rubble. Um, yeah, baked rocks, carefully arranged sand, and researchers working on rovers. Like, I don't think they make, I don't think we filmed them because we you know, didn't have permission to film them and so yeah. on. Uh, but, well, I hope we didn't film them because we didn't have permission to film them. Um, uh, but scientists working on projects for the next rover. And they were like, oh, during research, it's like, yeah, this one's a model of curiosity there. And we get there, and there's just this thing wrapped in tin foil that looks like it's made of, uh, uh, by a kid. I'm like, oh, this is going to be disappointing. Whereas I actually know what it looks like because I'm a massive space nerd, and I've Googled things, and I've watched all the documentaries. So I see the tin foil thing that looked like it was made on Blue Peter, British reference. Uh, <laughs> And they said that was a thermal or radar yeah. use model for testing thermal or radar based things. Yeah. Um, then we turn the corner. And then there is a the look garage. On, the look on your face, Matt. Honestly. In there is Curiosity's twin. It is effectively the same thing that is on Mars, but it's slightly different for testing things at this end. Yep. And that is the closest you can get to seeing that rover because it's in yeah. Mars, on Mars, at Mars. And, and there's, there's, there's warnings around it. You can't go within three feet because you might give it a static shock and break the systems. Which is fine by me. So yeah. I was within three feet of it. And yeah. I don't know if you noticed because you were fiddling around in your bag, but there was a moment where I just went... <laughs> <laughs> no, I was busy getting the microphone ready. <laughs> I was doing that like, yeah. I, I looked round, you weren't there, I was like grinding at Grinda and he went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so obviously we got a selfie with it. Yeah, obviously. Um, and yeah, we, we, we did an interview, we uh, recorded my bit to camera, we got all the B-roll, and then we were out of there. And that's it, it was in, get we the footage, in, get out. In to do the business and then leave. Yes. And we did. Yes, and I took as much time while doing that to look at things and go, ooh, <laughs> but you know, we can only take up so much of these people's time. Yeah, yeah, quite um, a few people gave, gave a couple of hours for us. Um, so I quickly snapped some photos so I have the memory. Yep. I took maybe 20, 30 seconds just going, <laughs> yeah. at Maggie, which is the name of the Curiosity's twin. Yep. I can't believe we've been here. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for, for taking the shots and everything that goes with it. Thank you for getting us to the stage <laughs> where we can go and visit it. It's not bad. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Like, there's, if there weren't, you know, 100,000 subscribers, um, you wouldn't get, I wouldn't get in this. We wouldn't get in this, so. No, yeah. I'm not quite sure how we can top this. No. So if this is the peak, then I'm sorry, but if you can think of something and you have access to something even bigger and better than this. Yes. Then bring it in. <laughs> <laughs>